Uh, hello. Uh, should you buy the uh, Celestron first scope, kind of as a first scope, first telescope? Uh, that's the question we're going to try to answer here for you. Uh, Orion has a, has one almost identical called the fun scope. So really, whatever I say for the first scope applies to the Orion. Okay. Let's first talk about the advantages of what what's nice about this scope before we get into. Uh, some other aspects of it. What's really nice about it is uh, that it's on a Dobsonian base. It's very easy to use for uh, children, uh, people who are getting their first scope. Um, that's and it's a very solid mount. Okay, you don't have to worry about it shaking. You don't have tripods to deal with, and that's what's one thing that's really nice about this kind of a uh, kind of a, a portable uh, tabletop telescope. Uh, which I think is superior to getting, uh, you know, like your typical 60 millimeter on a tripod, especially for beginners, because it's just so easy to use. Okay. Uh, another thing that's nice about it um, is it's pretty easy to find objects, I think, because you have such a wide field of view here. It's a, it's a really wide field of view for a small telescope, 76, and it's a short scope, and so it's it's like a real giant finder scope really all by itself. I don't find it difficult to find uh, bright objects in the sky. Now that being said, okay, uh, finder scope that you see on here doesn't come with this particular model. I added this. This was a uh, red dot finder, an extra one that I had. Okay. Now let's take a look at the three different models. Well, before I say that, you know, what the things that this scope is good at seeing is uh, some of your brighter uh, deep sky objects, things like uh, Orion Nebula, Pleiades, uh, Beehive Cluster, Great Hercules cl uh, Cluster, M3. There are some things it gets a pretty good look at, okay, if you have decent eyepieces they're using, which is another issue we'll talk about. So uh, certain, certain other uh, star clusters are good. It can split a few stars. Not too many, because it's not a high-powered scope. You can't get a lot of magnification out of it. And that's one of the downsides of it. Okay? All right, so let's talk about a few things uh, before we look at the different brands. Okay? Uh, finder scopes. Okay? Now, the original, this is the original uh, Celestron. This came without a finder scope. This is the cheapest version out there, and I'll show you the versions out there in a second on the computer screen. This had no finder scope. In my opinion, you do not need a finder scope with this telescope. Uh, if you pay extra for a finder scope, I think you're wasting your money. You don't need a finder scope. Uh, I find it pretty easy if I put a low power eyepiece in here to simply find your target, uh, get under it, you know, line your eye up right behind here and get under the target and then with your low power eyepiece and then just start sweeping left to right. Okay, now raise it a little bit, sweep left to right raise a little bit, sweep left to right, and you should find a target without much of a problem. Anything, anything that's bright, of course. That's that's the way to do it, and I don't. That's why I don't think a, a finder scope is necessary. It's a waste of money. Okay. So, keeping that in mind, let's take a look at the different versions of it here. So this is just a screen from Amazon because they have all three of them pictured here. Now on the left, that's the one that I have. I originally got this scope for like $35, and frankly, I would not recommend you pay more than about $35, $36 for it. They have it listed now at $49.95. I think it's way too expensive for this scope. Uh, I did see a few days ago they had one uh, used. It was like in the warehouse deals for $35 or $36 uh, with free shipping. That's really what you want to pay. So for this scope, which I kind of like this version of the scope, how it looks, I think that's the best deal. Now, with that scope, the only thing you got with that scope and that you would get with this version here is uh, these three eye or two eyepieces, actually. I'm sorry. You get these two eyepieces. You get a uh, 20 millimeter, and these are the Ramsden, these are Hygens. These are the low-end eyepieces. They're not great eyepieces. 
and you get a four millimeter. The 20 millimeter is for kind of the deep sky views of nebula, things like that. The four millimeter is half is halfway decent for looking at the moon. And I have seen Saturn's rings with this four millimeter. I've been able to see them. Um, and I've been able to see a couple bands on Jupiter. But keep in mind that that's after training your eyes to look at Jupiter's bands. I have other telescopes and I've been able to see Jupiter's bands a lot with the other telescopes, and my eyes were kind of trained to look for them. So, and and uh, Jupiter was in opposition, okay, when I saw it, it was really close uh, to Earth. So, yeah, I can't guarantee you'll see Jupiter's bands with these eyepieces uh, if you haven't looked at Jupiter a lot, because your eyes have to get adjusted and kind of getting used to looking at Jupiter's bands, okay? So these are not great eyepieces. Um, I would recommend if you buy this, if you get this for 30 or 536, my recommendation uh, to keep this under 50 bucks, okay, which I think is a reasonable price, I think it's worth it, is to try to order a 10 millimeter uh, counter eyepiece like this. This is an Orion one, okay, because that will give you um, what you need. The 10 millimeter will give you good views of like Orion Nebula and a lot of other deep sky objects that you're able to see with this telescope. So you'd use the 20 to find the object, and the 20 doesn't give great views, in my opinion, okay? Uh, it might be decent for the Pleiades or Beehive clusters, but you know it's not even that great for that. It's just not a great eyepiece. Now you put the 10 in, and this is good for a lot of the other objects. And you should be able to probably get a nine, or maybe a nine counter would be even better, nine or 10 millimeter counter, you got to, eBay is a place to look. Uh, there might be some other places, but nine or 10 million, maybe you should be able to get it for, you know, under $15. And that would keep you at about the $50 mark. And I think that would be a pretty good deal. Okay. So that would be my recommendation if you order that version of it. All right. Let's look at the other version. Another version is the Cometron. That was the second version. That's being shown at 60 bucks right now. I've seen it for lower than that. I've seen it in the low 50s. I would not pay more than the low 50s, okay, for a Cometron uh, first scope. Now this version has comes with a finder scope. It's this one actually, which is a 5 by 24 plastic. A uh, piece of crap, really. It's really not that good of a finder scope. It's got a very narrow field of view. It's hard to adjust. Um, it's really not worth paying the extra money for it, but that's what you would get with the Cometron. And you can certainly you see the problem with using finder scopes with this, because this is a uh, Newtonian scope, the most comfortable position to use a scope is to have it kind of sitting on a low table or chair and then you sitting down in a chair looking down upon it. That's the most comfortable position. And then to get down to use the finder scope, you'd have to really bend down, let's get on your knees if, you, if you're looking at anything that's you know fairly high up in the sky, very uncomfortable. You know, a kid could probably do it and maybe that wouldn't bother them. Um, but you really, again, don't need it. I think it's easier to find uh, objects using the methods I show you than using a finder scope like this, okay? But what you do get with that version is you get two counter eyepieces. You get a, a 20 millimeter counter, which is far superior to the 20 millimeter uh, Hygens or Ramsden that came comes with the other version. This is a good eyepiece, and you'll be able to see a lot more detail and a lot clearer images. And then you get the 10 millimeter. Okay, two good eyepieces. The problem is you got no shot really of seeing uh, Jupiter's bands with a 10 millimeter. It's just not uh, enough power because it's just in the low 30s. Um, and you're not going to get a good view of Saturn's uh, rings. So I recommend if you uh, get this version of it, you would really want to get a higher power eyepiece. I wouldn't order a four millimeter, you know, Rams and you could. Uh, the best thing you could do is maybe get a Plasso. I've never seen counters on this, but if you can find a counter, fine. This is a 6.4 uh kind of generic Plasso I got from, uh, what is it? Forget where I got this. But it wasn't too expensive, actually. It's got a very small eye hole. This gave me a pretty good views of uh, Saturn's rings, and I could make out a couple of the bands of Jupiter with it, okay? I would recommend, now, so you can't go beyond 6.4. Plasso's, for whatever reason, 
you cannot focus the telescope less than about 6.4 millimeter eyepiece for PLOSLs. You can for these cheap rams then, okay? Okay, so now if you want to get more power out of this uh, first scope uh, or fun scope or anything similar to this, what you have to do, there's two methods to do it. If you want to get close to the maximum recommended um, magnification, which is around 90x, which is serious magnification, you can you can do almost anything with that, and that makes a scope much more usable. Either you have to get a Barlow like this, which is a long Barlow, not this is a hundred buck Barlow, okay, but there are other ones much less. You can't use a shorty Barlow like this, okay, it doesn't get close enough to the secondary mirror, this gets much closer and allows you to magnify much more. So then you could put like a 10 millimeter in here. Okay. Now I used it with this with a nine millimeter planetary and it worked great. Okay, it may not work with. I'm not sure putting a Kellner or a Plosso in uh, will necessarily work. You have to. You want to try it first, but a planetary definitely will work in combination with this. A pl um, and a planetary will definitely work also. That's the second way by itself. This is a TMB. Um, I can't vouch for other planetary eyepieces, but these work and these will allow you to get all the way down to about 3.2 millimeters which will give you over 90x and that's what you're shooting for so if you're going to order a planetary eyepiece just for the scope I would make sure that you can get a refund just in case it doesn't work the TMBs definitely do I've only found these on eBay you might find them somewhere else but eBay is the only kind I've found okay so that's what you want to go with that will get you the power and these are around 40 bucks or so. The problem with using a Barlow in this is you've got a lot of weight on it, and it's kind of cumbersome to use on a little scope like this. That's why I prefer uh, using a, just a planetary, um, a planetary eyepiece like this instead of in combination with this. So I would prefer this instead of this and this, or this and if a Plosso works or a, a counter work you just have to try it with your scope see if it works I know it works with these planetary ones so so uh, hopefully that helps on that that'll get you more power that's worth the money that puts the price of a scope like this up closer to the 80 buck mark so here's a here's a Barlow a ghost sky Barlow I see for 32 bucks similar style to this so you know that's 70 bucks less than what this would be so that would be the Barlow you'd want to go with if you're gonna use a Barlow um, I prefer just the planetary eyepiece. Okay, let me tell you my conclusions uh, about the 3.2 millimeter uh, TMB optical uh, planetary eyepiece using with this first scope. I can't recommend it, um, although you can achieve focus in theory. Uh, the focus is uh, really hard to uh, get unfuzzy. I just don't think the optics and the focuser, especially of the first scope, is up to the task. It's really difficult to uh, get the focuser uh, to get clear back. It's pretty much impossible. You can get, there's some sweet spot, or like a sweet spot in the 3.2 millimeter where it'll be a little bit better, where you can kind of see, uh, you know, for example, I was able to see the Orion Nebula decently in a sweet spot and you could see the nebulosity really good uh, it does work fairly well for the moon so I will say that for the 3.2 uh, the moon it did did a decent job I wouldn't say it was a crystal clear image but it was certainly fair usable uh, for Jupiter which just uh, was rising about 11 uh, last night could not get a clear image uh, simply could not it was just too fuzzy with the 3.2 millimeter. Now the six millimeter, it does a better job, although the Jupiter is not, it's still over a month away from opposition. So it wasn't the size that it's gonna be. So I could not get an image from the six millimeter, but it was at least more clear. Um, I'm sure the six millimeter will allow you to see the bands of Jupiter without a problem once it gets closer to opposition and it gets bigger. Uh, 3.2 millimeter, I just don't think so. It's just too hard to focus. So I wouldn't recommend the 3.2. I think it's very possible the 4 millimeter uh, would uh, have satisfactory results, but I can't be sure of that. I think the 5 millimeter is probably your safest bet, and 5 millimeter is around 60 something 
I think low 60s as far as uh, magnification. Uh, the 6 millimeter is like 50, 50x. So I probably would recommend a, a 5 millimeter like this and maybe a, a better quality uh, planetary eyepiece. You'd have different results. Um, I did find that using the long Barlow um, that I showed you earlier uh, was a little bit clearer. It's still difficult to work with, but it was a little better. But keep in mind that that Barlow was about a $100 uh, Barlow. And uh, I can't, I highly doubt that it'll be as good as the results of that with uh, you know, a $30 Barlow that I showed you earlier. So overall, to get higher magnification, I think planetary eyepieces are the thing. But of course, for a scope like this, if you're just using it for this scope, you don't want to spend the money uh, to buy just an eyepiece for that if this is going to be your only telescope. If it's not going to be your only telescope, yeah, get a high quality planetary eyepiece. Uh, I would try a four or a five millimeter that you can use with another telescope. Uh, and I think it'll probably work with this. If you're only going to use it with this, I would make sure you can return it, get your money back after you've tried it. You know, you want to be able to try it when there's a planet out like Saturn or Jupiter to give it a good test, because that's really the ultimate test of whether it's going to work. Because um, getting increased magnification does help you on other objects like star clusters and uh, the Orion Nebula, for example. I mean, it does really bring out the nebulosity when you're when you're amping up the uh, the magnification. Okay, but I can't recommend the 3.2 millimeter at least for this planetary eyepiece which is a low-end kind of planetary eyepiece you know there's better quality ones out there but you know are you gonna want to spend 60 bucks for eyepiece for a scope that doesn't even cost 60 bucks you know I don't know if that's really worth it so anyway that's my conclusions um, about boosting the magnification capabilities of this I think four to five millimeters we're getting 75 uh, power down into the 60s is probably the the best you're going to get and get a halfway decent image. Uh, reflectors by nature have a little bit softer images of planets anyway and uh, this telescope is definitely is uh, on the soft side definitely when you're looking at planets but it can be done it's just you're not going to get nearly the kind of image that you would get with other telescopes. So hopefully that helps on that account. The last type, which is the same as a fun scope from Orion, is the uh, latest version they had was the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that is a fun scope, okay? There is, yeah, the, so a fun scope from Orion. There is another version out of the Celestron that has the uh, red dot finder, okay? That's the Cosmos one, I'm sorry, the Cosmos, and the fun scope have the red dot finder. Again, a red dot finder works better than this thing, but again, using it is uncomfortable and it's not worth paying the extra money. So I would not go with that version just for that reason. They give you some other accessories and stuff, but it's just not worth the money. All right, so to conclude, I mean, I, th I think this is definitely a good uh, first telescope for somebody because as I've mentioned, it's benefits so easy to use, so lightweight, so easy to carry around. Uh, it, it can be ready to, to use in a matter of just a minute or two. You don't need to like let it uh, cool down. Um, so it, the benefits, you know, are great even for somebody who already has other telescopes like I do. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to keep it. So these are these are good deals uh, for beginners, and if you end up, you know, not sticking with a telescope hobby, this looks nice on the counter. It's decorative and you know occasionally I'm sure you'll still use it sometimes so it's not like it's a big waste of money so hopefully this helps uh, these telescopes uh, I definitely recommend uh, for a first telescope all right see you later